Thank you for joining us for the Tritium. The Blessed Sacrament will be in the outdoor repository following the Mass until 10 p.m. Please come to pray for a while. Remember to keep social distancing or stay in your car if you prefer. Our opening hymn is Lift High the Cross. The cross, the love of Christ proclaim till all the world for his sacred name. Led on the way by this triumphant sign, the host of God in conquering ranks. the cross the love of Christ proclaim till all the world adore his sacred name so shall our song of triumph ever be praised oh the Fight for victory, lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore his sacred name. Okay, to all of you, welcome. Boy, I look out. I must see a thousand people here, <laughs> April Fool. But no, we gather as a faith community, and let's face it, we are a great community here in Ambler. And so as we begin this liturgy, my prayer, may the grace and the peace of Jesus be felt in your hearts this day and always. And so we come to the great gift that Almighty God offers, Jesus, his Son, our Christ in Eucharist, and so we can put ourselves at this altar in a more fitting way. Let's trust in God's love and most of all his mercy as we pray. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. 
Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. And so, may Almighty God have mercy on each and every one of us. Forgive all of us of our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Okay, oh God who have called us to participate in the most sacred supper in which your only begotten Son went about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. So grant we, your community of St. Joseph of Ambler, pray that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. And so we pray for our Lord Jesus, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one, and shall share the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, and then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to two doorposts and the lintel, of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat its roasted flesh 
with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow shall come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me. The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of the faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Our second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread and, after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. 
praise and honor, honor and glory, glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, the Lord be with you. Our gospel for this liturgy is from St. John's account. Glory to you, O Lord. Okay, before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. Well, the devil had already induced Judas son of Simon of Iscariot, the Iscariot, to hand him over. So, during the supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist, then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter and said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now but you will understand later. Well, Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. <laughs> and so Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, whoever has bathed, has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. And for this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on, and reclined the table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Okay, no question, as we say. This has always been a real beautiful night, especially, you know, I can say, here at St. Joseph's, you know, Holy Thursday liturgy was so profound, so special, and following the liturgical guidelines, and then I guess too, you know, two busloads going around visiting churches. There was a faith of understanding how important Holy Thursday night is, and it's important for us never to forget how important it is in our personal lives. We can go so far as to say the Eucharistic celebration that we're always able to celebrate and receive, no question, was instituted on this holy Thursday night at the Last Supper of the Lord. And if you notice, you know, our gospel, even though it should be so more centered into how important the Eucharist is, well, Jesus makes two good points. First and foremost, he's telling, hey, if you're going to be my follower, don't be snobby, think you're better than everyone else. 
No. If I, the teacher, the master, who you hold in high regard, can turn around and wash your feet, you should be able to imitate me, reach out and touch other person's lives. And that is the message that no ancestor buts Jesus is trying to bring to us on this Holy Thursday. And let's face it, more this year than any other year with the coronavirus, there are so many sad cases. Naturally, we pray for anyone that is ill. But at the same time, there are so many lonely individuals. And it doesn't hurt us to imitate Jesus. Reach out in some way and let them know you're thinking, or even doing kind acts for them. You know, some of the elderly, I don't want to use the word old because we're elderly. But we elderly, let's face it, we're not supposed to go out too much. So the thing is, there's so many nice things each and every person here in Ambler can do for another. And that's what is coming out, I think you can say, of this gospel. Jesus is saying, if I can do it, so can you. And that's when we look at the beauty of what Jesus did. And then again, at that supper, we realize the Eucharist is uh, Jesus taking the bread and the wine and proclaiming, this is my body, this is my blood. And the most important words, do this in memory of me. Because Jesus knew he was not going to be with his disciples, his apostles, his friends much longer. And therefore, what he gave to Peter, who he established as the head of the ministry that he was leaving behind, is make sure people can celebrate the Last Supper event and change the bread, change the wine into my body and my blood. And that's what takes place every time we have a liturgy here at this altar and all the altars throughout the world. When the priest says those words, no ands, ifs, or buts, it is the real presence of Jesus on that altar. And more importantly, it is the Jesus that is given to the people of God. And, you know, I just know how important it is. We see a lot of things, you know, when we're administering and, quote, when we're giving, you could say. And I know as a priest, when I, you know, give the Eucharist at Holy Communion time, as you know, I say, the body of your Christ. I added your, the, uh, <laughs> you know, the bishops didn't say that, but I added your, because when you say amen, you are saying, I truly believe that this is Jesus, the Son of God, my Christ, who suffered and died so that all, including me, would have eternal life. And so I ask each and every one, you know, sometime tonight or even tomorrow, our church will be open for a while and pray on this, to reflect upon how important the Eucharist is in your life. My director said I couldn't talk too long, so I have to stop at this point. He gave me a signal. <laughs> no, no question. Our Andrew is doing a fabulous job for all of you out there that you get to see what is taking place in our church. Okay. You know, every year at this time, we would be at the cathedral, first of all, in the morning, and we would make a recommitment to our faithful call of priesthood with the archbishop, you know, well, of course, that was taken away from us today, but we would always do it again at night for you, that we stand before you and make a promise for the coming year to live our priesthood. 
And so, Father McElroy and I proclaim, my brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the memory of the first Eucharist, at which our Lord Jesus Christ shared with his apostles and with us his call to the priestly service of his church. Now, in the presence of you, God's holy people, we are ready to renew our dedication to Christ as priest of his new covenant. At our ordination, we accepted the responsibility of the priesthood out of love for the Lord Jesus and his church. We are resolved to unite ourselves more closely with Christ and to try to become more like him by joyfully sacrificing our own pleasure and ambition to bring his peace and love to our brothers and sisters. We are resolved to be faithful ministers of the mysteries of God, to celebrate the Eucharist and other liturgical services with sincere devotion. We are resolved to imitate Jesus Christ, the head and shepherd of the church, by teaching the Christian faith without thinking of our own priority, solely for the well-being of the people we were sent to serve. And so our brothers and sisters, pray for us, your priest. Ask the Lord to bless us with the fullness of his love, to help us be faithful ministers of Christ, the high priest, so that we will be able to lead you to him, the fountain of your salvation. So may the Lord in his love keep us close to him always, and may he bring all of us, his priests and people, to eternal life. Amen. Okay, tonight, as we begin our three-day celebration of our redemption, we approach our saving God with the needs of our world and, of course, of our own. Trusting in God's love, we pray. For Pope Francis, all our bishops and clergy, may God continue to purify and sanctify them in their holy orders. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For nations and peoples around the world, torn by conflict and the coronavirus crisis, may the Lord grant them his peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all those who suffer with physical, mental, or spiritual illness, may they know the healing and comforting presence of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all of us gathered in our homes here this evening, May we find renewed inspiration in serving one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who have died in the faith, especially those from the coronavirus, may God bring them to himself for a life of eternal joy and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all the intentions that we hold within our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Okay, Heavenly Father, you always have at heart the salvation of your people. Please hear our prayers and the needs they represent and answer them as your will. Through your Son, Jesus, our Christ. Amen. At this time, I would take a collection up, but I guess I'm not. <laughs> At that first Eucharist, before you died, O oh Lord, you prayed that all be one in you. At this our Eucharist, again preside, and 
and in our hearts your love love renew oh may we all one bread one body be through this blessed sacrament of unity for all thy church O lord we intercede make thou our sad division soon to cease draw us the nearer each to each we plead thy drawing all to the O prince of peace thus may we all one bread one body be through this blessed sacrament of unity so pray with me now that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept this sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his church. Grant us, O Lord, we of St. Joseph community pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Okay, Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. All right, let all of us give thanks now to the Lord our God. For it is truly right and just. It's our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. Well, as we eat his flesh, that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing now the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Okay, you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things, and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus, at whose invitation 
we celebrate these sacred mysteries. For when the night he was betrayed, Jesus himself took bread. And giving you thanks, we said a blessing, and then he broke the bread. Then he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this. All, all of you, and eat it. For this, this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, said a blessing, and he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all, all of you, and drink from it. For this, this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you. For many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <coughs> the mystery of faith. And drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Okay, therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Now look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. We we'll grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. And may he make of us an everlasting offering to you, so that we may obtain an in, in, in inheritance with you for life, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, and the blessed apostles, and glorious martyrs, and all the saints, in whose constant intercession we rely in the presence for an unfailing help. And may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in the faith and the church charity of your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family here whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And transform our lowly bodies after you. 
our departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, especially those who have died from the coronavirus, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, from whom you bestow in the world all that is good. <coughs> Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Okay, as we continue now, we recognize our togetherness. I'm always proud to say, we of St. Joseph community, we are a family. We're no question brothers and sisters because we're all united in the love of God who is Father of us all. And so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our wrongs as we forgive those who have hurt us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and grant us peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Our Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. So Lord, look not on our faults and failings, but on our faith commitment in and through your church, and grant each and every one of us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever endeavor. So, my prayer, may the grace and the peace of Jesus be felt in your hearts, my sisters, my brothers, this day and always. So, as family, we share shalom. Just elbow, remember. Amen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. sins of the world grant us peace okay my family in faith behold the lamb of god behold him who takes away the sins of all so blessed and graced are we that we do, we believe. And we have accepted Jesus as our saving Christ. And we continue now to live our lives in, with, and through him. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word and my soul will be healed. May the body and the blood of Jesus Keep each of us safe for eternal life.
sake of Christ, I willingly accept my weakness and my trials. For when I am powerless, then I am strong. Although in God I willingly accept my weakness and my trials. For when I am powerless, then I am strong. Although in God's love my life was blessed, my faith was given to the test. For mercy did I pray, and then I heard God say, My grace is enough for you. My grace is enough for you. For the sake of Christ, I willingly accept my And so when I am weak, then I am free. The power of Christ will rest in me. Through all that I endure, the love of God is sure. His grace is enough for me. His grace is enough for me. For the sake of Christ, I willingly accept my weakness and my trials. For when I am powerless, then I am strong. Hey, grand almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May the blessings of almighty God, the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit come upon you each and every one of you be with you, my sisters, my brothers, this night and always. And so, before we go, we pray, St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the weakness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke, we humbly pray. And do thou, a prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast in the hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And as we go, again, we will put the Blessed Sacrament in our outdoor repository. No question, our prayer constantly is that all will stay happy, holy, and healthy. Enjoy.
succeeding, shared by our immortal King, destined for the world's redemption, from a noble womb to spring, of a pure and spotless virgin, born for us on earth below. He has man with us conversing, stayed the seeds of truth to sow. Then he closed in some order, wandering in life On the night of that last supper, seated with his chosen band, he passed victim meeting, first for 